to the National Marine Aquarium's sixth online learning session, Mermaid Tales. My name is Marina the Mermaid, and I'm so pleased you've joined me here today so we can learn all about animals who live under the sea. Now, if you were here last week, uh, you'll remember that we learned all about megafauna, those massive animals who swim through the sea. And we talked about what they like to eat for dinner. And I also read you a story about a whale shark who found an amazing shark tooth and had to travel through the ocean to find who it belonged to. <laughs> now, since then, I have received some lovely pictures from you all. So thank you so much for sending those in. And as usual, I have chosen a few to show you today. So this one is a lovely craft created by Edith and Elise, aged four. Lots of beautiful ocean creatures. I just think that, like, that one's so inventive and colourful. Thank you so much, Edith and Elise. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> what about this one? Aha! So this one's beautiful. This is from Emily aged five. How awesome is that? I think that's a penguin there. We're going to talk about penguins a bit later on today. Fantastic job. Well done. <laughs> oh, this one's great. This is Oscar, aged four, drawing. And I really like the mermaid in this one. Can you see the really long tail? Absolutely amazing, Oscar. Thank you so much for your lovely drawing. And finally, we have somebody who is a big turtle fan. This is... Um, this has been drawn by Josie, age six. And as you can tell, she loves turtle. Who doesn't? <laughs> Brilliant stuff. Now, everybody, some of you wrote me letters asking me questions about the ocean. So I've chosen a question to answer for you today. I was asked how many species of starfish are there? Well, you guys, I can reveal there are actually over 2,000 species of starfish which is incredible, isn't it? 2,000 species. My favourite is actually the chocolate chip starfish um, because they look like they have chocolate chips all over their back. <laughs> Amazing. Now, everybody, it's now time to move on to this week's theme. If you were here at one o'clock for our deep learning session, you would have learned all about life cycles. And today, uh, we're actually going to learn about life cycles in this session too, but we're going to focus on the life cycles of animals who live in the Arctic and the Antarctic. So really exciting in the North and South Pole. So as you can see, we have a beautiful globe just here. And right at the bottom, under the globe, the bit that we can't see, we have the South Pole, which is right in the middle of Antarctica. And it's surrounded by the Southern Ocean. And I know we can't see it quite well here, but actually there is land there and the land is covered in ice and snow. So it's the windiest and coldest place on the whole planet. But up here, we actually have the North Pole surrounded by the Arctic Ocean. And there's no land at the North Pole. It's just really thick ice sheets, making it a very cold and very dry place to live. And guys, even though these environments are really difficult to live in, animals who live there are really well suited to living in this chilly environment. <laughs> now, we can say that they live in a home or a habitat, um, and in this instance, a polar habitat. And these habitats provide them with everything they need to survive. They have air to breathe, water to drink, food to eat, and a place to raise their young as well pretty cool. And we can actually say that their young or their babies are called offspring. Can you say that word to yourself? Offspring. You'll be learning a lot about that in school at some point. Now, some animals don't look after their offspring, like fish, like reptiles and amphibians. They don't look after their babies. But animals like mammals and birds do. And we're going to be learning all about those ones today. And the first animal I would like to introduce you to is a penguin. Here we go, a little penguin just here. And penguins, many of them, can be found in Antarctica, right down the bottom there. Um, but all of them can be found south of this invisible line that goes around our planet. Can anyone think of what that invisible line is called? Hmm, begins with E. If you're thinking equator, 
you are absolutely spot on. So well done. All penguins are found this side of the equator and many of them in Antarctica. Now, penguins have webbed feet and wing-like flippers to swim through the water and they have lots of feathers to keep them warm as well. At the bottom, the feathers are very fluffy and at the top, they are oily to keep them nice and dry. So let's have a look. Here I have a picture of an emperor penguin. Okay. Now, what happens with emperor penguins is the mother will lay one egg, which the father will sit on for two to three months whilst the mother searches for food. Once the egg hatches, the mother will return to look after the chick whilst the father goes off to feed. Amazing. <laughs> Both parents will take in turns to feed their chick who will huddle together with other penguin chicks forming a crash. Once they have lost their baby feathers and grown their adult plumage, they will learn to hunt for themselves and eventually have offspring of their own. Wonderful. Brilliant. Now, let's move on to animals that can be found, not in the South Pole, but the North Pole. So over here, I have a picture of a polar bear. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, I have a friend who's a polar bear, okay, and he lives up here in the North Pole, and his name is Bert, and Bert told me that he has very thick fat to keep him warm, lots of fur to trap heat, and also polar bears do have black skin to soak up the sun's rays, which is really interesting, isn't it? And unlike a penguin, polar bears are actually mammals, not birds, so they live, give birth to live young. Let's check out that bed out, shall we? Here we go. <laughs> so here we have some polar bears. In the winter months, the mother polar bear will give birth to one to three cubs in a den that she would have dug in the snow. The cubs will drink their mother's milk until the spring. Lovely. <laughs> After this, she will teach them to hunt. And when they are two to three years old, the cubs will spend a few years hunting for fish together before finding other polar bears and having offspring of their own. <laughs> I hope you like polar bears as much as me, children. I think polar bears are amazing. But the last animal we're going to talk about today is this one here. And I bet you guys might know the answer to this one. And you will know what animal we're looking at here. If you're thinking narwhal, you guessed it. Well done. This is a little narwhal. Brilliant job. Now, narwhals live in the Arctic waters up here in the North Pole. And just like polar bears, they have a thick layer of blubber to stay nice and warm. And they have these long tusks on their heads. And they use these to sense the water around them. So they can tell if the water is warm or salty using these tusks. All the boys have them and some of the girls have them as well. Pretty cool. Now, guess how long you think those tusks can grow to? That big, that big, that big. Show me what a meter looks like, guys. They can grow to three of those, three meters. That's really cool, isn't it? Really amazing. So let's check this out. Here we go. Here's a picture of a narwhal. The mother will have one baby or calf who will drink her milk and be looked after for about a year. Babies are brown when they're born, but when they get older, they develop white spots. And the boys and some girls grow their own tusks when they reach about eight years old. <laughs> Brilliant. And here, after they, after this, they will start having babies or offspring of their own, and they will tend to live in large groups or pods for the remainder of their lives. Pretty amazing. So there we go, children. We've compared three different animals who live in polar habitats and their amazing life cycles. Um, but it's now time for our story this week, for our mermaid tale. And this one features a novel. Amazing. <laughs> and this story is called the unusual unicorn of the sea. So sit back and relax and let's go. <laughs> the northern lights danced across the sky, flickering pink, blue and green. A mother narwhal had just given birth to the best whale calf she'd seen. He drank her milk and stayed by her side as they swam and sang their song. As the days, weeks and months passed by, he grew so big and strong. A few years later, he swam with his pod, chatting to whales his age. They had just started to get their tusks 
which were spiralled, pointy and beige. But his tusk was nowhere in sight, and he often wondered why. Why haven't I got a tusk yet, he thought, letting out a sigh. The other whales thought it was strange and liked to call him names. Billy No Tusk was their favourite. To them, they were just playing games. His mother swam over to explain that tusks grow at different rates. It'll grow one day, she said with a smile, so don't listen to your mates. But later on, she was shocked to hear he had swum away. She put together a search party. They looked all night and day. Having no luck, the mum said goodbye and then began to roam. She decided to search far and wide to bring her son back home. Soon the mother saw a furry creature sitting on an ice sheet. It was white as snow with a little black nose and wide fluffy feet. Hello there, polar bear, she said as she looked into his eyes. Rays of light shone down on him as the sun started to rise. Have you seen my son at all? He is much smaller than me. He is a narwhal, but has no tusk. He has gone missing, you see. She noticed he looked rather tired and like he was going to cry. He hung his head and gazed at his feet as he thought about his reply. I'm afraid I have not no narwhals here, apart from you, of course. By the way, can you help me? He asked, sounding hoarse. I'm exhausted from the swimming between the ice sheets. They've melted over the years. I can't quite reach that land behind you. It's bringing me to tears. The mother was keen to help the bear, so she placed her nose at his toes. She lifted her tail so it reached the land and arched her back till it rose. She'd created a bridge for the bear who shuffled along her back. He reached the land, said his thanks, and strolled off to find a snack. <laughs> so here we go. Here's a picture of the mother narwhal helping the bowler bear find his way from the little ice sheet to the land. <laughs> Amazing. Right. The sun hung low in the sky as she continued along her trail. Then she spotted a gorgeous creature with a long, fluffy tail. It was an arctic fox sat in the snow. She was licking her left paw. As the mother approached, she got a good look. She didn't like what she saw. A plastic ring was caught on her paw, digging into the skin. It was from a plastic bottle that hadn't been put in the bin. Here we go. Here is a picture of the arctic fox and that plastic ring around her paw. She doesn't look very happy, does she? Poor Arctic fox. Ouch, yelped the fox as she placed her paw on the ice. I wish that humans would snip these things so we don't pay the price. The mother narwhal angled her tusk so the tip slipped under the ring. She yanked and pulled, hoping there was some relief that she could bring. When the ring finally broke, the narwhal was filled with joy. She looked at the fox and asked a question. Have you seen my boy? The fox was so delighted, she danced about in the snow. Thank you so much for helping, but I haven't seen him, no. The narwhal said goodbye and continued on her way. She missed her son terribly. She hoped he was okay. Weeks went by as the mother searched, feeling rather blue. Then in the distance, she saw a creature who slowly came into view. The Arctic walrus was sat by the water, lazing with his huddle. He was really big with two long tusks and looked in rather a muddle. Excuse me, Narwhal, I'm very confused, he said as she swam into range. There's one of your kind just over there who's really a little strange. As she turned her head, her eyes lit up. Her son was very close by. Her heart almost burst as she swam on over, so happy she could fly. 
she noticed he was growing a tusk. Not just one, but two. He was also swimming upside down. Why? She hadn't a clue. I'm so odd, I have two tusks. I'm more like a walrus, it's true. If I'm this way up, they'll point downwards, just like walrus tusks do. So here we go. We have a picture of the silly narwhal swimming upside down, trying to be a bit like the walruses. <laughs> Lovely. The mother laughed and nudged her son to turn the right way round. Come on you, let's go home now that you've been found. On their way back, she told her son that he was very unique. It is very rare to grow two tusks. Be proud of your physique. The two tusk narwhal was a little worried that he would be an outcast. But on his return, all of his friends yelled, Yay, you're home at last. We're sorry for calling you names, they cried as they swam over to welcome him back. We don't care what you look like. You'll always be one of the pack. He realised how worried they'd been after he'd swam away. His friends admired his amazing tusks as they all began to play. As the weeks went by, the young narwhals gained some lovely white spots. Their tusks got long as they became fully grown and they sang lots and lots. The narwhals splashed in the cold Arctic waters with the stars shining bright. The two-tusked narwhal was grateful for his tusks as they swam throughout the night. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that story, children. I'm so pleased you've joined me here today. I've shown you my drawings, now I'd like to see yours. If you'd like to draw any pictures, write any stories or letters, please send them to learning at oceanconservationtrust.org. Next week is our final session and we'll be learning all about how to look after the ocean. Also, my friends here at the aquarium do run tours of the building, virtual tours, so that you guys can actually see animals like this all around the building from the comfort of your own home or classrooms which is pretty amazing so I just thought I'd let you know about that um, so again if you'd like to inquire about that please email learning at oceanconservationtrust.org now I've been out of the water for quite some time so I think I'm just going to go and hop in a tank have a little swim and play with my friends one of my favorite things to do while I do that you're very welcome just to Stay here for the last minute or two of the session and enjoy chilling out with our lovely fish here. Thank you so much, everyone. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.